live it in a va ecmo once again you go to the maximum and come back and based on the pressure and the saturation yeah, you need a mean airway arterial pressure of around 60 and you need a saturation of our 90 plus so you you adjust your rpm and flow based on that okay don't raise it too fast because it can cause sudden increase in the afterload if a vv ecmo also can do that sudden afterload increase in the rv can happen it can stun it same thing happens to the LV in a VA ECMO, okay. So, stunning of the uh, heart can happen, ventricles can happen. So, you need to gradually increase. When you increase, keep eye on the RPM, don't raise too much RPM more than 4000, can cause too much negative pressure, can cause too much hemolysis. So, all those things, all the vein collapse can happen. So, be careful, go gradually, okay. Just keep an eye on the pre-pump pressures and the inlet of the uh, draining cannulas also because once you raise too much, the cannula starts vibrating, chattering starts, okay. So that means you are trying to suck in too much blood too fast, okay. So go gradually. Okay, then the pressures. So what are the pressures you see? The pre-pump pressure and the pre and the post-oxygenator pressures and the delta pressures. What is the pre-pump pressure supposed to be? The pre-pump pressure should be slightly negative, which is around minus 20, okay, minus 30. Once it crosses minus 50, that means you are applying too much negative pressure. So keep eye on that. That can cause collapse of the vein and the hemolysis, all those things. So, so be careful. Uh, if it is too negative, look at the RPM. Is the cannulas are too small size or a kinked or obstructed, partially obstructed cannulas or the volume of blood in the patient may be too low. Okay, so if, if you are keeping a RPM of around 2000, 3000 and you are creating too much negative pressure, that means the probably the cardiac output in the patient is too low, you need to increase the cardiac output in the patient. Okay, sometimes adding a reservoir or a bladder, something like this, okay, helps in nullifying this effect. Okay. Then coming to the other pressure, pre and post oxygenator pressure, okay. Just after the pump, oxygenator comes, okay. So between pump and the oxygenator, what will be the pressure? Obviously, it will be positive. It will be very high. Then it goes through the oxygenator. There will be a resistance there. There will be a drop of pressure there. Then the post oxygenator pressure will be slightly less, okay. So the pre-oxygenator pressure is usually around 150, 200. You don't